Hello students, in this video we're going to be talking about scripture and tradition. So let's start with sacred scripture. So sacred is from the Latin word sacra, meaning literally set apart. So it's things that are reserved for divine use. So you can have sacred vestments or sacred vessels, you know, like a chalice or a cup or something like that. You can have a sacred place, like a church, set apart for the worship of God. So sacred scripture then is those collection of writings that in a sense are set apart or divine because why they're they're inspired by god so it's that collection of writings that's that is so designated now there's another uh term here that we need to know which is sacred tradition also from the latin sacra and from the latin trotere which means literally to hand something on okay so the sacred tradition is the living transmission living keyword there living transmission of the teachings life and worship of the church accomplished by the Holy Spirit. And that last phrase is really important there, that behind all of the church's activity, behind the sacred tradition that is handed on, you need the Holy Spirit himself guaranteeing that what is passed on is actually the will of God. And that's, that's crucially important to understand his activity there. Now, sacred tradition, this kind of tradition is usually referred to as capital T tradition. There's also lowercase t tradition. And sacred tradition is not the same thing as little traditions. So what, would, uh, what are little traditions? Those are the practices or devotions or local customs meant to help pass on the big T tradition. Let me give you a few examples to help make this more clear. So the, the big T sacred tradition is that Jesus ascended into heaven. So there's a picture of the ascension. But one of the things we do to help appreciate and understand Jesus' ascension in heaven is to pray the rosary. So that's a small t tradition. Another example of big T tradition, sacred tradition, would be the sacrament of baptism. So here's a picture of the baptism of Pocahontas. And so baptism is one of the seven sacraments that is passed on by the big T tradition, something we've inherited from, the, from apostolic times, from Jesus himself, really. But one of the things we do to help us appreciate baptism and to see its value is the practice of crossing ourselves with holy water like we do when we enter a church. And that's a way to help us remember the sacrament of baptism. Now, if the church got rid of all these little uh, holy water fonts tomorrow, would that be contrary to the big T tradition? No. But these little things are helpful and, and remind us of uh, the, the substance of our faith. So let's talk about the relationship of sacred tradition to sacred scripture. And the first thing we need to know is that they both have a common source in God himself. It's God who inspires uh, scripture and has it put into writing. It's just his word that, that, you know, he moves people to write. But then there's also sacred tradition. And God himself, again, the Holy Spirit is at work in this living transmission. Now, the tradition defines and hands on scripture. So scripture is a part of big T tradition. And so scripture is not the sole source of the church's teaching. We also have this whole practice, this whole life that is handed on since the time of Jesus and the apostles. And that would include things like, as we said, the baptism. Now, tradition also includes how we interpret scripture. So the book's not out there by itself. It doesn't put itself together. That's part of tradition, what we include. And the book doesn't interpret itself. That too is part of tradition. And there's certain interpretations of scripture that have become authoritative over the years and certain interpretations that have been rejected. But the important thing here is that when we think of sacred tradition, we're thinking of, of a living teacher, you know, that, that goes through the books and helps guide us along our way. And so what's passed on is this, um, this knowledge from one generation to another that is refined and expanded as questions come up, as disputes come up. But the, the tradition, in a sense, expands and becomes more clear, more precise. Why? Because people have objections, people have questions they don't understand. So the final thing to say, the final definition, is to say that sacred scripture plus sacred tradition is known as together the sacred deposit of faith. And you think of a deposit at the bank, it's where you go and you put stuff in, you know. Um, the whole deposit of faith includes these two things, the, the life that's handed on and the word of God itself in sacred scripture.